made it to the top ring and started the ground knees and the top ring is so big it will not even fit into the cylinder <laughs> so I have to grind and grind away till I can get it to fit inside the cylinder bore and then proceed to grind to get the achieve gap that we're trying to go for and what makes this more challenging is the top ring is a harder type of material than the second ring so it's exposed to more heat and it's a harder ring so that means a lot more grinding finally got to my top rings I can't wait to get to the oil control rings a lot smaller a lot easier but anyway finally got to my top rings and this top ring, just for a reference, is so large that it will not fit into the cylinder bore. It's actually sticking out of the bore. So I have to take off enough material off this ring, grind away enough material, in order to fit it down into the cylinder, and then grind away to achieve the gap that I'm going for. So most engine builders, a lot of professional engine builders, start with the second ring because the second ring is made out of a softer material and it grinds away fairly easy or a lot easier the top rings are a lot harder because they're exposed to more heat so this ring is hard, hard to grind if i started or if the average person starts with the top ring they can be used to applying so much force to the grinder itself that once they finally get around to the second rings they may make a mistake and take too much off and that's a common mistake that's made by a lot of engine builders so they usually start with the second then work their way up to the top ring and the oil control rings usually fit in the cylinders 
but unfortunately we have the same type of issue because that's what we had to do with this particular bore and of course my oral control rings is too big to fit in here also so for example they would literally overlap um, it's a lot smaller and easier to grind away and you can see how it's overlapping right there just as a reference but these are a lot smaller so these should go fairly quick when it goes to grinding these and the waffle ring is of course made out of a thicker material but that's pretty easy as far as grinding also I had to take a quick reference shot of this this is a second ring laid over top of the top ring and you can see how much material I literally had to grind off just to get this to a nice gap even up right there that is a lot of grinding okay slowly getting it getting it top ring finally made it into the cylinder and you want your grinds to be totally straight and on point so for example you can see as I zoom in there is butt to butt if you start grinding crooked then you'll have a gap that's not totally true in here and your filler gauge is not going to fit smooth in here so you want to grind totally flush in a straight line you don't want to grind a ring like sideways caught to the left or caught to the right you want to be totally in line so that way when this ring goes butt to butt the gap will be exactly uniform with the, the filler gauge Slowly getting there, grinding away. Finally have the piston ring down in the bore itself in the cylinder. And you can see where I'm grinding away. I have enough gap just to fit in there without touching. And then I'll slowly continue to grind until I achieve the desired piston ring gap. And of course I have oil inside the cylinders as you can see. It's just when you're sliding it back and forth it leaves like little light marks. But that actually rubs away and I'll clean everything up. Once I'm finished. Making some progress, slowly getting there. I'm at 19,000 and we got a nice snug fit into the cylinder which is nice we're getting there so a few more thousands to go and it's snug so I mean I can literally let the gauge go just to get in there so a few more thousands and we'll see where we're at. there you go perfectly lined up and even as you can see right there this is great upon research and watching several videos and deep diving I found the culprit that took out the ring lands, the ring supports on the pistons. Apparently the reason this broke out is because whoever originally owned this 3.6 liter was running this bad boy. So when they were running it, of course the temperature was expanding pretty hot and as a result of the temperature expanding. The rings butted up without really hardly any gap and end up destroying the ring lands. So therefore that's why it's extremely crucial and critical that we have the proper ring gap. Uh, a good enough gap that we're not getting a tremendous amount of blow by or really you want virtually any blow by but you're still going to get a little bit in a high performance racing engine but you want minimum blow by but enough gap when you push the engine to the limit and have some serious horsepower coming out of each cylinder that it doesn't expand to the point where the temperature is so hot that the rings go butt to butt. You don't have the proper gap and then you get ring flutter and the ring flutter end up destroying you and knocking off your ring lands. So that's what happened to this factory piston and is in number three cylinder. Upon my research we won't know officially until we run temperature probes into each one of the cylinders off of the exhaust ports to see which cylinder is generating the most heat and from my assumption 
Normally, I was thinking it would be cylinder three, and of course, cylinder three, according to that piston, pulled a lot of heat, and I mean a tremendous amount of heat to the point where it broke off the ring lens. I can see how that would generate some heat, and that would be because the intake port would come right over top of here. You have your coolant, and therefore, that's why Volkswagen has these large cooling ports in this particular block because they're trying to cool the intake temperature that's coming through so you want to have two hot cylinders on each side of an intake port right here so it's receiving heat from here and here and going into this back piston uh, cylinder back here and therefore it can generate a lot of heat one of the advantages is over here you have your exhaust where the exhaust has a shorter path and it would bleed off a lot quicker so therefore it can kind of push the higher temperatures also up into cylinder four now cylinder four if you look at cylinder four it has a large jacket right in the front right here which could offer extra cooling and coincidentally like i said it's over this particular cylinder uh volkswagen designed this block for whatever reason and the way they did with engineering larger coolant ports or oil ports in certain areas and locations of the block. But this has a large area where liquid would flow through and potentially help cool this number four cylinder. But then I would think this would also generate a lot of heat is because it has a longer path to evacuate, but the air isn't getting heated up as hot. So it could go back to, as I was thinking, possibly cylinder three. One, you have your intake ports, which is really short runners right here. A longer exhaust port to get back at the back, but this has outside. And not another cylinder over here, so you don't have to worry about heat generating over here. So, for example, this port, you have cylinders here. Staggered, same here, cylinders over here. But the intake temperatures would get pretty hot in cylinders 3 and 5, passing along these other two. And therefore, it's really crucial that we also run some good coolant. We also have a nice, efficient radiator and keep our temperatures low. So that way, we're not putting a lot of heat and hot air into the cylinders, which will generate some heat anyway from a turbocharger running high boost. So tuning is going to be very crucial. We're going to be running E85 race fill and that will definitely help drop down some of the temperatures so this engine is going to be pretty unique as far as tuning i'm getting it in and i'm glad to say i am finished grinding the top ring 254 a.m 255 a.m in the morning sitting here grinding getting it done february 15th 254 a.m so, finished grinding all my top rings this morning. I just finished off number six, gapped it at the specified gap that I am searching for, and this is turning out good. I'm really happy with the results. So, I've come up and developed the system. This is turning out pretty good. Now, I will start this evening on the oil control rings and keep this bad boy going. We're waiting on. The wrist pins, we're waiting on three more pistons to be coated from line to line. I have three over there. Original factory piston right there. The three local compression pistons that's going on this engine. When we receive the other three, I can go ahead and get my wrist pins. Install all wrist pins and pistons together, assemble them. Put this stuff in the engine. Double check my clearances for my rod bearings and continue with this build. Take this cylinder head right here. It's already been set up. Bolt this bad boy onto this block. Do my timing chains. And get this bad boy running and ready to go. Getting it in. Getting it in. It's got to do the wafer grooves for the oil rings. And I'll be finished. All the rings. Getting it in. Yes. Yes. Uh. What? 
Grinding. Grinding. Yeah. Grinding. Uh, 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 uh. What? What? Grinding. Grinding. Uh, uh, uh. Let's get it in. Whoa. On my mind, baby. High horsepower. On my mind, baby. Grinding. On my mind, baby. Woo! Stop grinding!